This is the GoPro Hero 11, and this is the Insta360 X3. And if you're wondering which action camera you should buy, that's what we're gonna try to answer today. And at the end of the video, I'm gonna let you guys know which action camera I carry around all the time in my camera bag, because there's only room for one. Before we get into this, we should first ask, what's the actual purpose of an action camera? And to me, the purpose of an action camera is to capture yourself doing something that's not feasible or possible or smart to capture on your main camera. And that's why you have an action camera. For example, is it possible to bring your FX3 onto a jet ski and film yourself? Well, yeah, but it's probably not the smartest idea. But I also wouldn't use an action camera as my main camera, and I'll explain why. So let's go through some different areas and compare which is better. Let's start with the bottom line, which will dictate things for many people, and that is the price. The Hero 11 is $530 and comes with a 32 gigabyte memory card. The X3 is $450, just the camera by itself. And then if you want the selfie stick in a 64 gigabyte memory card, it's $487. I'm not sure why it's that price but that's quite a bit cheaper. And that basically, that's everything you need. For the GoPro, you'd still need some cool mounts to be able to film with it in cool ways. Um, really for the X3, you just need that selfie stick. So it's gonna be quite a bit cheaper to get the X3 Point one for the X3. Then let's talk image quality. And here's where I think the GoPro obviously shines. The GoPro is just one fixed lens. So it is optimized to look good. Whereas the X3 is capturing a 360 video, two cameras putting them together, and then you're reframing and choosing whatever you want from that. So the Hero 11 is definitely better in terms of image quality. But with action cameras, image quality for me doesn't matter as much because with all the craziness, the dynamic movement, all of that stuff, you're not really paying attention to like, oh, what are the skin tones looking like right now? Um, you know, feature films uh, sneak in GoPro footage all the time and you kind of know that this is an action shot and so you're a lot more forgiving. But I will say on something like an FPV drone, I definitely want the nicest quality image because I am capturing these really beautiful landscapes. I want the highest quality possible. It's different than when I'm snowboarding, for example. I still want quality, obviously, but I don't need the absolute best resolution or best image quality if I can get some other stuff. The X3 has a pretty high quality single lens mode, so you can just use one of the cameras at a time, but it's still not quite as nice as the Hero 11, in my opinion. Overall image quality, one point for Hero 11. Now let's talk about wideness. When you're shooting action stuff, you want it to be really wide. And the X3 is, it's almost unfair because it can go <laughs> basically as wide as you want. It can go incredibly wide. And even with the new Hyperview on the Hero 11, the X3 is still gonna be better at capturing a wider image, which just makes for really fast dynamic movement. And even in the single lens mode, the GoPro with Hyperview, the new widest field of view is about 140 degrees, I believe, whereas the X3 can capture at about 170 degrees. Point X3, stabilization, even though the GoPro is really good at stabilizing and it has that cool like horizontal lock thing, which only works in some modes, the X3 basically has horizontal and vertical lock, so you can spin it in any direction, any way you want, and it's still gonna be locked in all the time. And that is absolutely wild. When you're filming, you're just like, literally you're just wizarding around with the stick. You can do whatever you want. It's always gonna look good. It's crazy stable. It, GoPros are very stable, especially with real steady. X3 is the most stable camera you will ever use in your life. 
scratched it. The one thing I asked you not to do? <laughs> yeah, but it, nothing a spit shine won't do. Which one do you think is gonna be better? This one's more fun, to be honest. This one's like, whoa. And that one's like, I have no idea what any of that meant, <laughs> but I will say I probably made both look good It just took a lot more effort on the GoPro because I actually had to like move the camera around whatever change the angles Whereas with the X3 I just filmed I didn't adjust the camera at all just Wave the wand wave the wand Peter's fly the flag <laughs> wave the wave wand for <laughs> wizards instead of pirates <laughs> Point X3. Let us talk about ease of use or of workflow and we're gonna break that up into actually filming with it and then editing. Both are super easy to set up and start filming with, but with the X3, the invisible selfie stick changes everything. I think it's the biggest reason to use something like the X3, not just because it looks insanely cool. It's like you have this like tiny personal drone that's perfectly locked on you, follows you anywhere you're going. It looks super cool. But also the process of filming allows for me to just enjoy and focus on the activity that I'm doing and not whether or not I'm capturing everything. Because I'm always capturing everything. It's a 360 camera and the selfie stick disappears. So there's nothing in frame. There's nothing that I have to worry about kind of obstructing what I'm trying to capture. And it's not only capturing me doing the activity, it's also capturing, you know, if you're doing it with a friend or the landscape or any of that stuff. I want to be enjoying the activity that I'm doing, even though I, I still want to capture it too. I want to enjoy it. Like when I go snowboarding at a cool mountain, I don't want to be just focusing on trying to film myself. I want to be focused uh, for my safety also <laughs> on the actual snowboarding and not filming it. Does that make sense? I should be giving the X3 like five points for this because it changes the way that you film action. Once you've tried it, it's really hard to go back. One point for the X3. But in terms of the editing and post workflow, GoPro is just so easy. You literally film and then you just offload the footage and start editing. Whereas with the Insta360 X3, you will have to do at least one extra step before you start editing with it. You can use the app and you can actually use your phone as like, what you're capturing, which is a really cool way of reframing or framing what yeah. you want to actually show the audience then. Or you can do what I do. I think this is like the best way what, to have the most control and get the best quality. And that is to just export ProRes versions of the 360 footage from the studio app. And then you can bring that into Final Cut and you can reframe, change direction, zoom in, zoom out, go as wide as you want or tight as you want. You can do whatever you want. You can grab 15 different clips from that one clip, but it does take some more effort and some more work to get that done. The end result is much cooler and much better but more work. Credit to Insta360 though, they're developing a lot of like AI tools that will make this faster and easier for you. So for example, you can already just let the AI <laughs> choose for you which clips you might want from your 360 footage and then I'll just give those to you. Now, I am a bit of a control freak with my footage so I don't use it, but I could see this being really useful for beginners or people that just want some footage really quickly to post online or whatever. They also have some really crazy features like sky swap. Look at that. That's super trippy. <laughs> That's cool, look at it. AI tools. Isaac is in seeing <laughs> all of them. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's so trippy. It's like I'm in like some Fortnite world. <laughs> That'd be cool for a music video. <laughs> Maybe you should make a music video. <laughs> Maybe you should make some more music. You keep telling everyone I make music, but no one has ever no one heard anything <laughs> that I've done. These are more on the gimmicky side, but very, very interesting. And I'm curious where this goes in the future. So overall, in terms of ease of use with workflow, I would say the GoPro hands down wins. But then the end result of what you can get from the X3 footage. Uh, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna give both a point here. Durability, hands down, this one's easy. GoPro wins. Uh, the problem with the X3 is if you scratch up one of the lenses, you're done. Like it, it really affects the footage. Um, GoPros are gonna take a little bit more beating. I think that's what GoPros have been known for. GoPro does this well. GoPro wins durability, point for GoPro. Then let's talk about vlogging. 
And I don't think either of them do it well. I think uh, like an iPhone does it way better. So the reason why I say the iPhone is better for vlogging is because the GoPro is a fixed focus lens. So I'm actually not in focus when I'm vlogging like this. I'm not in focus. The background is in focus. I'm not and that's really, really distracting. Plus the audio on neither is very good and it's really warped out. It's just not ideal. Your iPhone, the cameras on this are so good that like I would probably, any smartphone these days is most likely better, especially iPhones at vlogging. One point for the iPhone. <laughs> then let's talk FPV drone flying. And in theory, the X3 would be like the ultimate FPV drone camera because you could just reframe and post and not have to worry about your camera movements being perfect. You kind of just worry about the flying more so, but the, the quality isn't quite there yet. But here's where I think the GoPro's image quality kind of beats out the X3 and I would rather just use the GoPro, even though it'd be really cool to be able to, you know, take a reverse shot, a forward shot, all of those different shots from the same footage. GoPro, you obviously only get that one angle, but the image quality, run it through real steady, the image quality is so nice for GoPro. In terms of FPV, ultimately you want the best quality and right now the Hero 11 is the way to go. One point for the GoPro. Let's also talk about time-lapse. I, I think a lot of people time-lapse on their action cameras and uh, the image quality I think is a little bit better on the GoPro, but the problem is, you know, you set up like a cool night lapse or something like that and then you're excited to check it out and you're like, dang it, I missed the action. Whereas with the X3, you can do 8K time-lapses and then you get everything you can reframe oh it was better over there okay they take that or or the the stars move so you can just move along with them you can do so much different stuff uh you're not gonna miss anything with the x3 and time lapse so i think i'm gonna give time lapse to the x3 one point for the x3 and then lastly battery life that's always gonna be a thing and unfortunately i don't think either of them are like super good but also not super bad like for me the way i use action cameras i rarely run out of battery i don't record super super long clips the only time i run out of battery is if i just forgot to charge up the battery um so yeah i don't think either are super winners here or super losers so let's just not give any points for battery life so there we go we have the final scores and in my little comparison here the x3 wins out but who cares about my stupid point system? What do I personally carry in my camera bag at all times? Which action camera is the one that makes the cut because I'm only gonna carry one? That's the X3. Because of that selfie stick capturing everything, I get to focus on the activity that I'm doing more so than filming. That's why I carry around an X3 with me all the time. Before that, it was the X2 for a long time already. The X3 comes with me now all the time. Now, if I have my FPV drone backpack, the GoPros are in there. That's where they live, that's where they stay. But for action, all that stuff, I just use the X3. I think something like snowboarding is the best example of just being able to be in the moment and just like, just shred the powder and not die at the same time, but you're still capturing everything literally everything the only thing that i do is you know sometimes i have it in front of me sometimes i put it behind me sometimes i put it low to the snow sometimes i put it straight up i'm just changing kind of the perspective a little bit but even then i'm just like meh, meh, meh. even just filming back to back with gopro and then the x3 um with the gopro you're constantly having to like meep, meep. You have to tweak it and adjust it so you can get different kinds of shots with the X3. It is that wizard wand that you just wave around like an idiot. You're gonna look stupid doing it, but the end result is pretty impressive. But these are just my personal opinions. Take them or leave them. I hope that helped you decide, make some decisions, or at least get you a little bit further along in the process. In case you're interested, I'll link both of them down below. That's it for me. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye!